Hey guys, welcome back to All the Right Reasons with Kayla and Debbie. Hi, Dev. Happy holidays, What's going babe. On? Happy holidays. How you doing? I'm I'm making it. I'm good. <laughs> we were like talking before, and I was just like, I'm in the mode of just I don't feel like doing anything. Literally nothing. So I just am like <clears throat> pushing through for like work, everything. I think just like last week doing the, we had like a Christmas showcase at my mm. church. And I think I was telling y'all about that last week. Mm -hmm. And it was just so like, I was like working throughout the day, like on either yeah. my stuff, stuff, you know, my, I have like three jobs basically. Mm -hmm. Um, or like, and then so then I would work all day and then go to rehearsal at night and not come back home till like close to midnight. So yeah. it was just like, I think I'm just drained from last week. Yeah, totally. But I just want to be in the bed watching movies or be in the basement watching like, like <laughs> anime with my brother, just <laughs> not doing anything, anything but that. Right. That's literally but. what I've been doing this week, but because I was sick. So it's not like it was like right. fun. But right. I mean, I was I was sick, but also like I needed to wrap these gifts, so mm. I was in bed wrapping all the gifts and mm -hmm. watching Christmas movies, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Nice, but then coughing like a, mm. a lot. <laughs> Sorry, but it was like so. It was like a mix. It's so crazy. It's like I got a break, but it was because I was sick. Yeah, right. But, but sometimes like, I'm that's gonna find your a way body. to enjoy this somehow. Yes, because like, sometimes your body's like. We're getting sick because I'm tired. I'm tired. I need a break. Okay. So, yeah. So was, I watched a bunch of stuff, like Best Man Holiday. Uh, okay, oh, uh, uh, Kayla, great. real quick. What are your, yeah. like, go-to holiday movies? Go-to holiday movies. Top of the list is 1970-something <laughs> Scrooge. 1977? Is that the one with Bill Murray? No, that's, Scroo that's the Scrooge with... Um, Oh my gosh, uh, Al, uh, Alan Frick. What's his name? What's the? He's like, he's oh, Al, Al, Albert Finney. Albert Finney. Oh yes, that okay. Scrooge is the best got Scrooge. Got it. Okay. <laughs> it's got it's got the music. The cinematography is just so like nostalgic. The acting Aww. is great. It's so funny, nice. but it's like super dramatic and like love that one. Elf love. is always really funny. Always. Polar Express. Oh. Um, a Christmas Story, It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are like my go-tos. Best Man Holiday is not on my go-to. I've seen it, of course, but that's no, not like Best Man Holiday wasn't a, isn't a go-to for mine for me either. But I just hadn't seen it. And I, I literally oh. hadn't seen it since it came out. So I was it like, came I'm out, gonna watch right. that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. my main go-tos are, I always watch Meet Me in St. Louis. I mm, always watch. I've never seen that. Oh my god, Judy Garland. Okay. It's where the song Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas was, like, originated from. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, it's really good. And then another one is Holiday Inn, which is Fred Astaire, Bing Crosby. Oh, that, yeah. I need that, to see those. Oh, girl. You're bringing up Julie Garland, Fred Astaire. Yeah. Yes. It's still classic, but that one was – it had um, White Christmas was originated from that movie. Gotcha. Um, what was another one? Of course, I watched It's a Wonderful Life and Elf mm -hmm. and yeah. – um, what was the other one I was? Of course, Polar Express. Another one that's good is Claws. Have you ever seen Claws? The animated one? Yes. Yes. Isn't that on one amazing? Yes, the one on, on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, it's incredible. It's so it's, underrated. It is. It's, it's literally so one of the best like animated Christmas movies I've literally. ever seen. Literally. Yeah, totally. I'm so glad you've seen it. Yeah, me and Kerwin, me and my brother love that one. We're like the only one, the only people in our house who've seen it, but we're just like yeah, but it's everyone so would love that great. movie. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah, it's yeah. like an, it's one of those instant classics, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff. Fun yeah, so stuff. holiday stuff. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm excited to just like tomorrow I'll be done and then I can just like veg out mm -hmm. or I guess just the rest of the weekend. But mm -hmm. it's just it's just like what you were saying. Like it's like adult life. You were saying mm -hmm. this earlier. It's like it's adult life. Like usually in school, I'd be like done, literally done until yeah. past the new year, past new year. Yep. But it's like now I have like jobs. 
but I have to still yeah, go back Yeah, that to transition of oh. like being in that mindset of like, oh, I get a break. Mm-hmm. I get spring break. I get summer off. I get like, yeah. you get older and you're like, oh, I kind of miss those days. Yeah. <laughs> Cause Definitely. now it's like, you gotta be like, tell your job. Can I get a week? Can please? I have, yeah. Can, can I, I not work today? <laughs> but anyway. No, we're super excited about today's episode, guys. We have a lot to talk about. Um, I'm so excited. (laughs) And we're so excited. We've been, um, the past like two weeks, we've been doing some kind of like, uh, what are we calling them? Just like, not freestyle, but I guess just a culmination of different things that we want to talk about outside of, you know, tea parties. It's our tea parties. But we're also like reviewing (laughs) things and not just like, you know, gabbing and stuff. It's like been a lot of fun. Last week we talked about the white lotus season two if you didn't get to watch that video go check it out that show is incredible incredible season so two. good incredible. season two is incredible <laughs> <laughs> yes so this week we're going to be talking about our thoughts on the harry and megan docuseries on netflix and also covering avatar the way of water and then we're going to end the last episode of the year with our top picks of 2022 TV, movies, Deb's going to do her books. I'm going to have some honorable mentions. And yeah, but we're going to talk about some tea first in uh, Batch Nation and pop culture. So let's dive in. But before we do, don't forget, I almost forgot to like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so you can be a part of the notification squad what are the other things we have to say spotify you can follow us on spotify on our podcast you can listen on apple apple podcasts because we are now on apple podcasts oh and at the top of the year so this is the last episode of the year but the top of the year we're doing um an episode where we're covering or we're we're giving you guys any relationship advice that you need but of course we need you guys to like you know ask us those questions and give us those any situation you might be in or your friend or your your sister whoever and uh yeah we're gonna answer all those questions um the first week of january in the first episode of the year so make sure you leave us a comment down below about that or you can check our community tab where we have like a specific tab just for that perfect (sighs) Yeah. All right. Let's dive in to some Let's tea, huh? Dive in. So it's not not all of it is like tea tea, but like it's it mm-hmm. was just stuff that I wanted like we wanted to talk just quickly, like briefly yeah. on. So one, okay. So Mike Johnson, <laughs> Bachelor <laughs> Bachelor Nations, Mike Johnson mm-hmm. just recently ended his podcast with Brian Abasolo. Um and I don't know. I feel like Brian's always on people's radar. Like he's the he's one of those guys that like everyone is is on everyone's shortlist to be bachelor, you know, always wanting him to be bachelor. Yeah. We love him. You know, he was he just doing this pod or whatever. But the last couple of posts, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but his content recently has just been very like overly. What is this? What is it, this? It, it's very overly. <laughs> Every time I see it. Like, yeah, it's like it's nothing wrong with like I guess necessarily what he's. I, I don't know. I, I just don't like the platform. I don't like the avenue. I don't like like it's just random. And mm-hmm. I just thought it, it's very overly like sexual, like and not in a way of like he's on there naked or something, but it's like he's giving advice, I guess, about like well, the first one post I saw was something about him talking about like size when it comes to like a male's you know Mm -hmm. um and then the uh, the the last post he just did was something about like foods women need to eat to like like taste good like yeah and I was just like what is going on because it just feels very like it's just going on here so random and like Mm -hmm. one thing I was saying and I'll shut up was like we used to get into this debate with with Dimitri about because Dimitri had this idea of Mike Johnson where he was like, I think he's an F boy. And me and Kayla were like always just like defending him. Like, why do you say that? What what makes you what gives you that impression? Like, you know, and I was a little peeved because I felt like don't put that on him. He's not an F boy. But yeah. and I'm not saying he is, but I just feel like this content 
is just it's, it's definitely like making us be like it just feels very like, I don't know. What do you think? No, I think it was so, I think it's a very interesting um, avenue for him to decide to like brand himself in this path of like, let me give you guys sex advice. I just think it's very random. And I think it's not really to me on brand with what we know him right. as. And maybe that's what he wants to do and okay. But I think it doesn't really work for me. And here's why. It doesn't really work for me because you're not married and you're not in a relationship. So that's why Deb is feeling like, yes, my brain goes to F boy because like you're only talking about sex, but you're not in a you're not in a stable or committed relationship with anybody. Right. So you and you're not even that old. He's what in his early 30s. If you're like a 50 year old dude. It's like, okay, well, you're also older. So here's your, so I'm talking about like credibility as someone, if you're trying to get these, like give this advice, you need to have like credibility. And I just don't feel like you have any credibility to be like, here's, here's what you need to eat. Here's what you need to do. And it's just like, who are you? First of all, (laughs) it's just like, and this is so random for you to be telling me. So it's just kind of like, I literally unfollowed him because I was like, this is annoying. And I was I like also, a because I was just like, what? Yeah. It didn't make any sense to me. I was like, why is he? Yeah, and it's like, even if it was, because sometimes I can feel that way about Nick Vile, but it's like, at least with Nick, he's giving advice that's broad. Like, it's not all. It's not just about sex. Like, it might right. be about sex if that's the question, but it's just like, it's more geared toward like a plethora of things. And I feel like if Mike was coming out and it was like a lot of different things he was starting to just like hey here's advice about this even though I would still be asking like well what are you in that's going to give you this credibility but the fact that it's just focused on sex it's just always about sex it's just kind of yeah and I don't know I thought it was presumptuous too because I think I said to Safi one time when his first video came out where he was like size doesn't matter it's all about if you know what you're doing or if, you know, if you know yeah. how to satisfy, blah, blah, blah. And I was just mm-hmm. like, it's so presumptuous when a man says that because it's like, how do you how know? How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're not a woman. So how are you going to? And it's like, OK, so you're trying she to could tell be, me. She could be faking the funk. For, sir. Exactly. You're <laughs> trying to tell me, you know, because you're the women you've been with have have been seemingly very satisfied that's all good and well and good, but boo, you actually don't really know if she's yeah, really satisfied. If a woman was saying that, cool. Right. But right. so, yeah. and let me just say something about like him versus Nick. Like the reason why to me, Nick and his podcast works is because first of all, Nick is like 40, 40 years old. So he's like, and he's, and he's talking about what he talks about is like dating experiences, yeah, yeah. dating failures, what he's gone through, which is like, yo, you're 40 and we've seen you on four different of these bachelor shows. Yeah. That haven't yeah. worked for you. So it's like, he actually has a credibility to be able yeah. to talk about it. And then lastly, he's in, he's been with that Natalie, Natalie joy for like two years. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, he's not married, but I'm just like, at least he has that yeah. and he yeah. has a podcast and it's like a whole, you're just making Instagram videos about like sex. <laughs> it's just so random. I'm random. literally just like, Mike, what? Anyway, anyway, that's how I feel about it. I unfollowed him. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. He might have lot. Like, I don't know. I was, I, I kind of texted Mish and I was like, I, I, maybe you were right. Mish. I, know, I don't I need know. to text him too. <laughs> So next up, we wanted to, well, I just wanted to touch really quickly on Kira and Romeo. Oh, yes. The bullet. (laughs) And I hear that it's like, it's getting a little messy. I haven't really looked into it like deeply just because I don't care that much. (laughs) But I heard that it's like very messy. Like she's saying a lot of stuff and I don't know. Did anybody expect this relationship to actually last? I think they were really... I think what's funny to me in these situations is how hard some of these people are trying to get people to buy that, like, this is so legit. And it's like, was it, though? (laughs) (laughs) I think, like, the show definitely pushes, you know, 
if they have any kind, especially, okay, with this last season of Paradise, any successful anything, they were going to be like, guys, look, oh my God. Oh, oh. Right. It's just like, okay, but like you were literally making fun of them in your edit. You right. guys literally made fun of Kira and Romeo in your final edit of right. the episode. It's so true. Where Romeo was like, no, I didn't necessarily feel that way. I was just like, it was just a lot going on. But yeah, I think they're they're going to do that regardless. But yeah, I don't, I'm not surprised at all. I don't know what the messiness of it is. But we all know that Romeo was kind of like doing the most. And so was Kira. So, I mean. Yeah. What do you expect? Who's surprised that it's messy? Nobody. Okay, Nobody. next up we have. So, Chris Harrison. Has officially <laughs> come out of obscurity <laughs> and just and decided to start a podcast. <laughs> it's been like two years since he's been like in the spotlight yep. at all. And um the title of this podcast is the most dramatic podcast ever, or something like that. And I was like, why, Chris? Like you couldn't <sighs> think of anything more intelligent, quippy, better than that. Yes. I don't know. What are your thoughts? There's that. And then there's pod? there's that. And then there's also why is it Bachelor related at all? Like, why is this title have anything to do with some that ties you to something that you would always say on The Bachelor? Like, I if you're going to start a podcast, be legit and be like, I'm going to completely remove myself. They removed me because you're being a crazy person. <laughs> and whatever but it's just like i i'm like why are you still tying yourself to the most blah, blah, blah season ever like what dramatic like why why just be just call it like the truth with chris or the, i don't but know hey, something completely to. different he has to because that's mean, all he has i know but every he doesn't have to title it that he's chris harrison everyone knows him from that so they're going to yeah. – whatever he titled the podcast, it wouldn't have really mattered. Like, yeah. people are going to listen to it because, of course, he's going to probably spill tea. But the fact that he is did he title it that is, like, I'm very on that. the nose. Can he spill tea? Is probably. there a D an NDA that is probably in probably, play? His NDA is probably – well, I don't know. He was the Listen, host. the last – I heard – I'm trying to remember longer. who – I was listening to the other day that said some there are some portions of the NDA that are for a time, but then there's also like portions that, that are, are like, forever. Yeah, lifetime. Dang, that's yeah, crazy. yeah. Like I think leads for anybody or for I like think for certain for leads it's like oh, that. Okay. Certain things is like lifetime. <laughs> so but Chris was like I don't know he he was kind of almost like you know, a part of the running of the show sometimes. Mm -hmm. So he might not have as much reins. I mean, obviously they fired him, so he yeah. wasn't in that much control. But but he that, got a big that's... severance because he was like, I could spill a lot of tea. I could spill a lot. You didn't hear about that? No, I didn't hear about that. Oh, yeah. he oh, He got a major payday because it was basically like, Oh, I could kill. I could ruin you guys. So y'all need to cough it up. <laughs> oh, shoot. oh yeah. So that's why I'm like wondering. Like, is he gonna spell T? Mm -hmm. Can he spell T? Good point. It's a good point. We'll have to find out. I mean, I'm I not feel gonna like listen everyone's to it, gonna but... listen to like the first episode. I was just thinking this the other day. I was like, everyone's gonna listen to to the first episode and then be like, okay. Unless right. he has someone on that is of interest. Yeah, it'll probably be like, oh, if he has anybody on at any point from Bachelor Nation, then maybe we'll pop in and listen to that episode. Like, I don't consistently listen to, like, Caitlin Bristow's podcast, but if she has somebody on, I'm like, oh, let me just hear what right. Rodney had to say about whatever. But, like, yeah, anyway. Anyway. That is just funny to me that he titled yeah, it that. It's just so <laughs> corny. I'm like, that is just so, like, cringy that you did that. But I feel like he doubles down on the cringe. He likes the cringe or something. Because mm -hmm. even remember he did that, like, erotic novel or something? <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah. like, Chris Harrison just likes the cringe and he just doubles right. down on it. Like, he doesn't mind being corny or something. That's it's true. weird. 
Okay, lastly, when it comes to vaccination news, Miss Gabby was on <laughs> clickbait. Miss <laughs> Gabby. <laughs> and me and you, of course, were like, okay, supposedly she said something about Eric. And I was like, she ain't going to say nothing about Eric. She, she's going to say <laughs> the exact, she's going to regurgitate the same whatever. And pretty much, true to form, she said the same thing, which is like, oh. we're just in different places in our lives. We weren't really on the same page. It was really, you know, after you get after getting out of the bubble of, you know, all of that, mm -hmm. it just didn't make sense or whatever. And then literally they talked more about Vinny than they did about even Eric. <laughs> and they asked her about it, Vinny and they were like, is that like, because Joe was like, what's going on with Vinny, you know? And she, yeah. she was just like. Well, like nothing was going on because I was engaged and I was fully, you know, like she's making sure she's like letting it. Be I known. did not cheat. There was no emotional okay. cheating. Yeah. There was nothing. But she was like, you know, they're kind of they have a flirtation, but it hasn't really man. gone anywhere yet. You know? Yeah. So. Well, I mean, OK, so first Gabby and Eric. I just, I don't know if it's like their fault. I don't know if it's the show. I don't know, but it's just annoying to me when the like explanation for why you broke up is like, we just weren't on the same page in life. It's like, what are y'all talking about? Like literally what were you spending your time talking about in the fantasy suite in the right. whatever? Like, what are you doing? Because that should be like basic level step one stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. your life, like your futures, your your values, your, your like I don't so but okay, whatever. I don't know if it, I don't I like Gabby a lot. Y'all know I love mm -hmm. Gabby. So mm -hmm. But yeah, and then with I don't know, with Vinny, I'm just like I don't know. That is just so funny to me. I did not when when people were telling me like online, oh my god, no her and Vinny when you know Dancing with Stars was on, I was like, what? But when you guys are like, if you guys go, you know, look at their social medias, they are literally always under each other's comments, flirting so hard. <laughs> and at first I'm like, this is just a joke for like, just for, you know, the fans. But slowly I have, yeah, heard Gabby say like, no, it's just a joke. And then I went to, well, I'd be open if you want to take me out. And yeah. then it was just like, well, like, so I'm just like. Okay. Hey, we'll have to see what happens on tour because they're both going to go see. on the Dancing with the Stars tour. Oh, nice. Gabby is actually um, co-hosting it with um, with Emma and dancing, of course. And I think Vinny is at least doing half of the show dates Okay. of the tour. Emma? So Emma Slater. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yeah. So... We'll have to keep our eyes open for, yeah, for that. Yeah, eyes open for I, that. Vinny is like, Vinny's cute. I always like Vinny. Like, Vinny's cute. Like, he has really good values. Um, and he, like, has a lot of, like, different streams of income and, like, businesses and things that he does. Yeah. So he's not, like, a joke. He's just from Vinny's Yeah, he's, he's not. It just doesn't. It's, like, to me, it's very different from Eric. Like, you were just engaged to no, Eric. So and Vinny is n no, I mean, to me, Vinny's nothing like Johnny. He's nothing. Like, well, maybe he's closer to Johnny. Maybe he's closer to Johnny. Closest vibe. to Johnny out of everybody. But like, yeah. he's n he's nowhere near Eric. He's nowhere near um, Jason. Jason. So it's just very like your final yeah. two, you know, he's nothing like that. <laughs> so, so yeah. Anyway. All right. So okay. next up, we were going to touch really quickly on this DCU shakeup. D yes. This DC I have comic been... universe is like. DC yeah. extended universe. Give it, give it the, the, yeah. Kayla. You're so the, the DC. You're the superhero. <laughs> movie I queen. am. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I love it because I just think like to build that whole world, like what Marvel is doing, I think is so just. I think it's really respectable and I think it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of faith. Yeah. And I think it takes, and I think the reason why we could say that is because we look at DC and we see what they've tried to do. And the obvious to, it's obvious to everyone in basic, <laughs> you know, uh, just mainstream that they've been fumbling the bag 
mm-hmm. like here and there a lot, pretty much since the start with Justice League and just like all this stuff. Got it. And so what has recently happened is that James Gunn, who you might know from like directing and writing the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, he was hired by DC to at first just to do like a Suicide Squad movie, which was way better than the first. So that mm-hmm. worked out well. And then he did a DC show. That was really good. That worked out well. So they ended up making him co-chairman of the DC universe mm-hmm. with this guy named Peter Safran. So they were like, hey, we're going to have an eight to ten year plan f- to like basically try to salvage this. Mm-hmm. Every film, anything filmed in the DC universe, like we're going to try to salvage this. So what started to happen was casts started getting fired, like um, movies were canceled. All this stuff is happening and people are like really upset. So first of all, let me start with Henry Cavill. So with the Black Adam movie who starred The Rock Johnson came out in what, like October or something like that. And at the end of Black Adam, Henry Cavill is featured as Superman. Okay. He's basically like, he's basically like, hey, you know, you and I need to talk. Because they, if you see the movie, they kind of both have similar power. So it's like, got it. okay, maybe this is them teasing uh, versus each other type of movie. Got it. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Black Adam is like an anti-hero. So anyway, so fans are going crazy. And they go even more crazy because DC has Henry Cavill make an Instagram video saying, yep, I'm officially back as Superman. Yep. Then they announce the next month about this James Gunn, Peter Safran as the new the new runners of DC. But also there was a leak that Ben Affleck, because, you know, I'm obsessed with Ben Affleck. Yes. There was a leak that he was he went and filmed something that's going to be a part of the new Aquaman movie. Right. And it kind of like was ca- already... ca- got out of the bag. Jason Momoa posted something like, oh, that looks like the secret yes. or the jig is up or whatever. And they like posted a picture of the two of them like. Yeah. On which set. is just like, yeah. Which yeah. already caused confusion because <clears throat> they, which already caused con- that. You're, you're totally right. They caught that caused confusion even earlier because like a year before that, Ben Affleck said he wasn't going to do Batman he anymore. Was he was done. Right. He was done. Yeah. So then it was like, oh, no, now he's back. Mm-hmm. But bef- but because they thought he was done, they were going to have Michael Keaton come back as Batman in the Flash movie. And they had they actually even filmed a whole Batgirl movie that ended up getting scrapped. They filmed okay. it completely. And they These scrapped the entire thing. <laughs> all over the place. They that's what I'm trying to be like. That's what I'm going to say. Crack with y'all. Like, what's going on? Oh okay, my there's God. even more. Okay. okay, so, so okay, so that's the Batman stuff that's already like, okay, what's going on? The Batgirl movie got completely scrapped. I think I don't know if it was a show or a movie, but they just trapped, they just threw it in the bin. But he was Michael Keaton was going to be in it as a Batman, okay. and I'm saying a because DC is also doing this whole multiverse thing. So okay, like, oh, there's different versions, different or whatever, versions whatever. of everybody. That got the it. Flash was, which gonna makes sense because the there's door. been so many Batman. There's been so They're many. They're like, Batman. let's just right. right. So anyway, okay, so back to Henry Cavill, right? So Henry Cavill does this does this video. Fans are like, oh my god, they love it. They're like so Freaking. excited. But then James Gunn and you know they he becomes a new co chairman, and basically Henry is like, hey, I he made another Instagram post. I just had another meeting with James Gunn, Peter and Peter Safran, and they told me that I will not no longer be Superman as their plan for Superman is to start with him a little younger. Mm-hmm. And so that just is what it is. So fans are like pissed because they're like, first of all, you put him in the movie. Then you had him make a video and then you just completely reneged on it completely. <laughs> and so it's just like, why, why have him make that Instagram video? If like a month later, you know that a plan could change and he could. So Already a ghetto Which is myth. proof, sorry, I keep interrupting, but which is proof that you guys are just like, like you said in the beginning about Marvel, I feel like the thing that has been so successful is the intentionality behind, mm-hmm. like thinking 15 moves ahead, right? And it's, yes. it's genius. It's really yes, like it's very smart genius. and like yeah. really well thought out because it's like, 
this this that kind of thing like the fact that you're making a movie and scrapping it or whatever is and that's scrapping crazy. it it's like all that money yeah. that went into that and whatever mm -hmm. that's crazy but then also you having somebody re announce something and then reneging on it a month later it just feels very like y'all don't know what y'all doing y'all know what y'all doing <laughs> it's going so they're on. just starting on the worst foot and then yeah. they're starting on the worst foot and then their second step is the Wonder Woman, the wow, sorry, the Wonder Woman three movie canceled. Aquaman two, Aquaman two is gonna come out. We don't know if Ben Affleck's footage will stay in the movie or not. So yes, we know that he was filmed, he filmed it, and we know Wonder Woman also filmed some scenes in the Flash movie, which I'll get to in a second because that's a mess. Well, the movie isn't a mess, but I'll get to it. But we don't know if those are gonna stay in or not. And then it's like, so so Wonder Woman 3 got, got canceled because the director didn't want to do it anymore. Um, Aquaman 3 is no longer a thing. Jason Momoa will not be playing Aquaman moving forward, but he might be playing a different character called Lobo, okay. which is so confusing. Why would you have why would you recast an actor as a different character in the same universe? That is so confusing. Especially when he was a main character a, like a main I could see character. if he was like a villain and now you're gonna make him like even that would be a lot but like He's he Aquaman. was Aquaman and now you're gonna make him what like huh yeah <laughs> Kayla, wild. that's crazy it's that's wild. wild and that's so wild. so it's like you know I think I think the, the so let me just start there it's like people are upset because the issues of the DC movies are not the actors. It's right. this. It's the script. It's the story planning. It's the like story. It's the the plan. You know, it's yeah, it's, it's fumbling production. over the place. It's production. Yeah. So they're like, why would you recast the act? The actors are great. Aquaman. Right. Everyone who played everyone is a great cast. But yeah, it's just yeah. So people are upset. But and so then I people do see how like everyone is on the older side. And if they want to give them a little bit more wiggle room, For you know what I mean? 10-year plan. Yeah, yeah. Like, it just, yeah, it does. Totally. Like, Ben Affleck is, like, in his 50s, you know? Mm -hmm. Even Jason Momoa, he's he's in his mid to late 40s, you know? Yeah. You got, you know, even Gal, Gal Gadot, Gadot, like, she's not older. Oh, she's not as old as them, but she's still not in that, like, younger range. So, yeah. whereas I feel like, but, that, I mean, not everybody in the Marvel was that, was, you know, like, you had the... Robert Downey Jr.'s, you had the... Mm -hmm, that's true. But maybe it was... But you still had, like, a Scarlett Johansson. You had a mm -hmm. Chris Evans. Like, they were still, yeah. like, 10 that's years younger mm -hmm. than the baseline age of, like, the people that are kind of playing in these new ones, or, or the DC ones or something. That's fair. Yeah. And it, like but the Henry the, Cavill's or whatever. Yeah. The other thing, it's just, like, chaos because they don't know what's going on with these characters, you know? Mm -hmm. And then also the Flash movie is kind of the starter of this multiverse thing that they're they're pit they're gonna like you know start in into this universe. But the only thing about that movie is that its its lead Ezra Miller is a hot I mean, a hot mess. I mean they yeah. are like they were arrested they have like all these, you know, come, came out that they have all these like mental health issues. And, um, you know, yeah. at first though, they couldn't, they couldn't find them. Like they were like out in Hawaii or wherever and they couldn't find them. They couldn't like WB was calling them, like trying to get in touch with them and could not find them. And so they finally found Ezra and they were like, but they had they they said he that Ezra had like, um, so I'm using they because yeah he, they're yeah my bad oh my god my brain excuse me no it's fine <laughs> yes yeah, so their pronouns are they them but um yeah like he had they had trouble on like the set like filming just mentally and that's that's really hard to hear but it's just that the fact that they were like arrested the fact that they were like I mean they were arrested for attempting to break in someone's like hotel room and threatening like k word them um like off the off the wall stuff so their their movie is on the shoulders of 
this actor <laughs> this unstable who is yeah and, unstable, it's and, and I, I don't mean to be insensitive no, about no, no, it no 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 just I mean, like unstable yeah and, it's and, not and really you know this is business and it's just like yeah. he's not they're not you know they're not so it's there there's that and in his in their movie you know flash flashpoint is supposed to be this the kind of you know uh uh, nucleus of this new multiverse and there's going to be other movies but it's like but are you going to keep him are you going to keep them excuse me because that, so it's just a lot and then there's also of course Joker and and Robert Pattinson's Batman are they That's right. in the universe or are they staying That's separate right. now they've said that they're going to stay separate they're not going to be involved okay. in all the other characters that they're going to start building but it's just everyone, every every DC comic, every DC EU super fan is like, what, what is, is going, going on? on? <laughs> Y'all threw all my people out the window. <sighs> what is happening? I'm stressed. Like these are my because some people, it's like they grew up with these characters, and yeah, I mean it's, su- really, it's I mean it's Superman. Like that's Superman. everyone's favorite hero of all yes, time. So, like, like yeah. and Henry Cavill is such a great casting. Yeah. So they're like, why would you, you know, so and James Gunn has been like tweeting a lot and answering people's questions. But to me, it's been like you're only allowing like a lot of more confusion because he's only saying really vague things and saying, oh, that's not completely true or that. But that to me is just giving like unprofessional a little bit just because it's like, yeah, but you could say that and someone could take it a certain way and then you could change your mind in right. four years so right. don't say oh in the future we're probably gonna do this or don't say that kevin no. feige and marvel doesn't do stuff like that because right. fans get upset because you could easily renege when a when a plan changes like y'all did with superman exactly don't let people in on stuff like you don't need like wait until it's official and they like it's yeah wait you're right it's unprofessional it's and yeah. also it's like how long ago did henry henry uh, henry cavill to the first Superman. It was that's what I'm saying. It's been 10 years. It's been almost so 10 years. You guys let him get 10 years older. You could have done it. Y'all could have exactly. started this whole thing that so true, like Dad. back then yep. and been doing it this whole time. But instead, yep. y'all were just like, What what have y'all been doing? It's like you get you have these random movies that come out here and there, but they're so far apart. Like mm-hmm. it's just there's no continuity. It's and it's no continuity. Yep. Yeah. So people are stressed in that world. Listen, and we're just thank you for giving us the rundown. It's funny because <laughs> I've I've seen the the I've seen more DC movies than I have Marvel. Marvel, which is so crazy. But like mm. I, I, maybe because they made less of them, like they've just come out here yeah. and there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go see it. Um, right. Yeah, like oh, I love I love Wonder Woman as a kid. You know, so yeah. I went and saw that. But like. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Interesting. 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 All right. Stuff. So now let's jump into. I know. So we're we're gonna talk about Harry and Meghan. We're gonna talk about Avatar, and then we're gonna try to give our faves. So yes. let's go into Harry and Meghan. And all right. First off, <laughs> what were your thoughts? Yeah. Just overall, how did you feel like the thing the series was as a For whole? Sure. Like, yeah. What were your thoughts? Um, so I was excited to start it because I don't know a whole lot about the Royals, um, other than just like knowing of Princess Diana, Mm -hmm. but even that, I didn't even know a whole lot about her passing anything. Mm -hmm. And I just knew Meghan Markle from Suits and I was like, oh, this is so cute. She's like married to Prince. And I just, so that was literally all I knew. I didn't know anything. So I was excited to dive in. Um, and immediately my first thing was just like, this is, I mean production level is through the roof Top the way they filmed it the way that they edited it it was just so tasteful um nothing felt too like even when they got into like some dark stuff yeah um and heavier stuff it never felt too gritty or it always felt yeah tasteful and Mm -hmm. um i think the way that even harry and megan dealt with leaving the institution was res- was respectful and i felt like even them uncovering what happened was still respectful like they yeah. never were like dragging william or nope. anyone through the mud it was just like this is just what happened yeah period and i just yep. respected them a lot 
Um, and yeah, I mean, just back to what I was originally saying, I was very surprised by a lot by a lot of the things that people were saying about her in the media. I wasn't aware. I th I knew that people were like some people liked Megan, some people didn't. Mm -hmm. I knew that, but I'm like, that's everybody. Like, she's a right. huge. She's she's a prince. She's a duchess. Like, she's right. huge. So of course, yeah. people, are, you know. But I didn't know the 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 level of just racism and. Oh, man, I mean, the things that people were saying about her was crazy. Crazy. And, uh, of course, Megan talking about, you know, how she dealt with that. Yeah. Oof. Oof. But, yeah, I love their love story, though. They're so freaking cute. That Listen. first episode, I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. I want, a, I want a love story like this. This is <laughs> so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Uh, I know. So, no, same. Like, for me, yeah. the first and last episode were, like, swoon. It was just swoon. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and I just, I don't know. I love, it's so funny, like. Like, and it, it makes sense that you wouldn't know as much as you, like, like the Diana and how she died and stuff. Because when she died, you were probably, like, I was, like, I think you were, like, two or died? something. <laughs> yeah. 97? Yeah. Yeah, it was literally two. Yeah. So, it's, like, I just remember growing up and, like, it was one of those deaths that, like, was just, like, oh, my God. It's, like, sh sent shockwaves around the world. And then, like, I didn't know as much about their marriage because that was like before my time, you know, like mm -hmm. when it comes to when they were together and just her doing those interviews and stuff. So it was interesting to see that stuff. But I definitely was fascinated with the Harry and Meghan just because the romance of it is so mm -hmm. like this idea I mean, of, oh, like this prince yeah. falling in love with this like American actress and and she's not some gold digger like kind of person yeah. at all mm -hmm. and I love I love the way he looks at her because it's almost like he it's like he doesn't look at her as though like yeah of course I got you because I'm a prince it's like no it's very he, like I'm so lucky to be with her yes. you feel that throughout the entire show and yes. you're like no he's a I'm like Kayla he's a prince like he's but. a prince but it's like <laughs> he's so not like mm -hmm. that in his mind that he he looks at her like yeah, if I wasn't a prince, there's no way I would have got someone that looks <laughs> like you, which is like so cute. But so then it's cute. like, you know, I don't know. I, I just think their love story is so romantic. I remember watching their wedding and just like being obsessed. I was so yeah. obsessed. I was like, Aww. oh, my God, I love them. And the fact that she's a black woman and he's yeah. like, it's just I don't know. It's, it's everything. Giving. It's everything. It's everything. Um, but like you, it's like, you know, I agree. I think they told the truth. They were respectful they um it wasn't sensationalized in any way and it wasn't like like you said it was even the heavier moments felt they still felt triumphant like it felt like hopeful like we overcame this so it's like we're talking about it and it was tough it was a dark period but we overcame and so yeah that's that's just kind of the tenor for me of the whole of the whole thing yeah, um, exactly. So, okay, what sh what interested us and what shocked yes. us? What were some of those bombshell things <gasps> for you that were kind of like, whoa? <laughs> I mean, first off, I think the level of intrusive that the paparazzi are. I mean, I knew how bad it probably was because they're one of – the royal family is like the most fame one of like the most probably famous family in the world. Right. Right. Um, you could argue. And so, but it was just like the fact that that is potentially linked. I mean, is linked to princess Diana's passing her car accident. And like that, that kind of string that Harry ties to why he wanted him and Megan to get out was just yeah. like, I get it. Because, yeah. and and the fact that they really were throwing her to the wolves, yeah. Um, over, like she's more popular than Kate and William or whatever, and she's yeah. like, and but it was so layered because it's not like it's excusable at all, and I I don't even want to say I understand it, but it's coming from a we have to keep our level of popularity because that's how we keep 
yep. our monarchy strong. Yeah. And so that fear of why they're throwing her to the wolves and just like, it's just so layered and crazy. And it was just like to take it in. It was just a lot. Yeah. Um, But I think the, I think the other shocking thing was her dad just like, Oh my God. Crazy. Really? Like, Crazy. and the fact that she's like, yo, I was a daddy's girl, like yeah. my whole life. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know that like, that was just, that was just yeah. really upsetting. And, um, but I think the other, the other thing that I was just like, oh, wow. Was the fact that it was like really cool to see a lot of other celebrities or a good amount of other celebrities come to their aid, especially yeah. Tyler Perry. Like oh, that him. was so cool. I was so like, wow, great. they really stayed at his house for like two months. Like they really did. No, it was six months. <laughs> oh, I thought it was six weeks. I thought they said six weeks. Oh, I thought it was yeah. six. Oh yeah. You're right. You're right. It was six weeks. Mm -hmm. It was six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even like Beyonce texting Megan, that was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Beyonce just texted, and he's like, what? He's like, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> she was like, I can't believe she knows who I am. <laughs> yeah, right. So cute. No, that no, was so I just, cute. So yeah. th those kind of things were, were super shocking. Um, but, yeah, just to see how the media twisted everything that she did comparing it like the, the comparison oh, of like Kayla. Kate would do one thing and then Megan would do the same thing and it would be like completely yep. <laughs> I'm just like yo it was crazy and like how like that yeah that brings up the point of like just the level of of racism because it was like mm -hmm. it it was about the fact that I, I don't know nobody wanted to look at it that way but it was like there's really no other way to look at it because mm -hmm. they're doing the exact same thing. So why are you going yeah. against her, but you're not? It it just, it was, it was wild looking at those. And I remember those tablets. Like I remember seeing those mm -hmm. comparisons, people talking about that, yeah, but to just see time. it like one after the other like that, yeah. it, it was like, dag, like this is crazy. And yeah. I mean, that does speak to just like what you were saying about the level of media and true, like intrusiveness of them. And but Kayla, what was wild to me was this revelation that, and I didn't know this, but I guess people know this, maybe people that live in Great Britain, that it's, it's there's a quid pro quo. Like they kind of, I don't want to say they own the media or they run it, but it's almost like they're in cahoots. Yeah. So yeah, because right. they use each other mm -hmm. and the, they're using them to keep this popularity which is which yep. is wild Kayla because mm -hmm. it's like you're almost this is almost like a level of I don't want to say brainwashing but it's almost a level of like propaganda that's the word yes. I'm looking for yeah it's like mm -hmm. you're only you want propaganda out there right. about you and yeah. it constantly right yep. and of course you want it to be good but it's like it makes sense as to that. That's what made it so like goosebumps raised when it came to what mm -hmm. happened to Princess Di because they broke up, sh they threw her to the wolves, and then literally she died being chased down by paparazzi by the media yep. in Great Britain. Yep. So it made everything make sense more about like why he was always trying to protect her, like why he was so afraid of that mm -hmm. happening, even when they were dating, like he was so scared. Because his mother literally died at the hands of, and what was so crazy is that because they're in cahoots, they actually could tell them, okay, yeah. stop. Ease like, up. Ease up. Chill yeah. out. They could mm -hmm. do that and they don't. So yeah. to me, it's like, yo, that's crazy because- Y'all hey. actually are, you don't, it's, it's almost like you're saying, no, no, you're not killing them. Like some people have these conspiracy theories, like, oh, they wanted to kill her. They were trying to kill her. Like, yeah. no, no, but it's almost just as bad because you could stop it and you don't. So mm -hmm. you're willing to risk losing this person's life or this person mm -hmm. losing their life instead of you just being like, yeah, let's not do that. Let's not, let's not actually have someone die. <laughs> yeah because right. you're chasing them down or let's just literally care about the well-being of a human being of my of you know my brother my grandson my son's wife whatever you right. know it's right. like the fact that 
their excuse for why they weren't telling the media, well, she has to, everybody else had to deal with it. Why can't she deal with it? It's like, but no, everyone's of all, not dealing with it on that is, level though. On that level. It, first right. of all, no one's dealing it on the same level because no one has been black here right. except for her. So exactly. that's the first thing. It's different. And then yeah. two, even if it was exactly the same, some people don't handle that. Le- don't handle it the same. Everyone's different. Yeah. So it's just like, but it's just the fact that like, not only did you not stop it, but you purposely fed stories, lies about yeah. your family member to better yourself is Which so is crazy. crazy. It's crazy. And just really sad, especially when she got to the point of like, when you hear Megan really breaking it down about like her suicidal thoughts and also just being like, and I think it was like maybe the second to last episode where she's like, listen, you are actively making people hate me. Yeah. And people are actively t- on social media, like death sending threats. death threats, yeah. wanting to to saying that my son needs to die. Like, yeah. and I don't feel safe. I'm, I can't sleep. I, she had, she miscarried. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like it, it is insane when she started yeah. really breaking it down. It's like, yo, it's not just like, oh, they're just saying bad stuff about you in the media. It's right. like, no, these people are actively following you around, like stalking you. Like when she talked about the, she's like yeah. when they were first dating and she was like, if this was just a regular person and there were right. cars lined up outside of their house, people putting cameras on their house, you would be like, this is upteenth level stalking. Right. But because but, you're oh, dating, they can do about you're it. dating. It's because of who you're dating. Huh? That's crazy. Huh? That like, it shouldn't matter madness. who I'm dating. That's insane. My and, safety is in jeopardy. Yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. sure. And it's it's crazy I'm because, safe. again, it's like, not only is this like a threat, but like somebody actually did die. <laughs> like, right. it's very not like, young. Oh, they could. No, it's not like this was did. all speculation. This is all just fear. This is all just somebody actually died. Yeah. Like this, ch- this, this kid lost his mom at like, what was he? 12. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. like that. and the fact that that wasn't a learning experience, that wasn't enough to wake y'all up and be like, yo, mm-hmm. let's try to pre- like, you know, but here's the other thing that was like really wild for me. That was uh-huh. just like so poignant. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause there was so much parallels between Diana, her and Diana. Mm-hmm. Um, and so of course the media thing was a huge parallel, but the other one was like her, I just thought it was really interesting how she was trying so hard to dim her light. Like she was trying yeah. to blend in. Like she even talked about the clothes she wore and how mm-hmm. she would just wear browns and wear just very neutral colors, white, black, brown, tan. Like it yeah. was just very monochromatic nothing too bright, nothing too, because she was trying so hard for the, to make them know, like, I'm not here for like, I'm not here to outshine anybody. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm not a gold digger. I'm not, I'm just like, I fell in love and this is his family and I'm trying to be a part of this family. And, and it was beautiful because all the things that they that some of the things that they do, she loved to do. She loved doing yeah. charity philanthropic ventures anyway. That's so the thing were, that was so crazy. It was just like, it was she actually does perfectly fit for what? Yes, which I mean, I'm going to get to that. There was another point I was going to make, but, Go but what I was going to say was, to me, what was so poignant was to see the contrast between mm-hmm. Harry and Charles. Because mm. of how similar her and Diana were with how beloved. Well, Diana was like very, very beloved. Mm-hmm. Um, if if Megan was white, she would have been, she would just, she would have been just as much beloved, be, to yeah. be honest. And she is yeah. beloved. But it's like, it was so interesting to me because it was like, here's this woman who's trying to dim her light and her husband is like trying to celebrate her. Like, He's mm. like, she's amazing. She's wonderful. She's mm. everything we need. She's like, and he's not threatened by the fact that mm. she's amazing. Like he's, yep. so true. it's like the, the fostering of that, the security of that for her yeah. as having a husband like Harry mm-hmm. versus Diana having a husband like Charles, who he is threatened by that. He is yep. insecure. He is very proud. You know, they show this video of 
of Diana doing a video an interview and she's like, yeah, you know, when I do, when I get a lot of that attention, it's, it's not fun at home because it, he's upset. He's jealous. And yeah. it just, it was so, uh, it was so poignant mm-hmm. because it was mm-hmm. like, here we have, we, we know as women, sometimes we, sh- we, we can either be in relationships where our husbands are either going to celebrate us and mm-hmm. push us and promote us and encourage us and yeah. be our biggest fan, or they're going to be like, you need to calm down and chill out because I'm the, it's I should be the one everyone's it's looking true. at. And it's it was true. to me, that was such a stark, that was such a parallel that was just so clear and it was it just made me love harry all the more it made me love them all the more because every time he talks about her he's just like she's amazing like she's everything we need (laughs) yeah what's the problem like and you know what it's an amazing point you just made i completely agree and it was why i like just fully looked at harry like he's such a great partner Mm -hmm. um but also when he made the point at the last episode of like Honestly, they kind of missed an opportunity to like extend themselves and actually uh what's the word I'm looking for? They missed an opportunity to not to to utilize Megan yeah. as a bridge for this disconnect between like y'all are behind. Like yes. diversity, like race, like race relations, like you are so behind, it's so insane. Behind. And it's you insane. could have used her as a bridge. Yep. Even if it wasn't out of the goodness of your heart, but out of like, hey, she actually would this. help us. Yeah. Like, she actually could be a tool. Right. But instead, you're so threatened and so insecure and you have so much fear that you can't even see the fact that like this is actually going to hurt you guys. Right. And so that was such a good point that he made because – yeah, like for a lot of people, this was a win that she was in, Huge. that she was a duchess and that she was black and that she was representing people, you know, that yeah. weren't represented. And yeah, and, that, and it, literally it, that was the that was I was going to piggyback on that. Like that's mm-hmm. to me, they botched it like they botched yeah, it totally. because it's like one, like you said, she wasn't trying to get any limelight for herself and it Mm -hmm. it wouldn't even have made sense for her to anyway because like harry is not ever going to be king so it's not Mm -hmm. like she's like i'm i want the spotlight because i'm going to be queen one day and i want to be queen like there's so many in line before harry Mm -hmm. so all they wanted was to just be they're a part of the family so they literally just want to genuinely help they were a part of the fam, like that. So yeah. that alone is stupid because it's like mm-hmm. you're literally throwing your own family member under the under the bus. Why? Like for right. what? Because it's like she's is a part of your family. It's not like she was trying to take Harry or she was like, you need to leave this. You he was yeah. the one who was like, we need to leave, you yeah. know, <laughs> but yeah. No, it's so true. But the other point I was going to say was that they botched it because like what you just said, <coughs> excuse me, what you just said, it's like when they talked about how the Commonwealth and all the mm-hmm. different countries that they colonized pretty much. Right. And how you have like something like 3 billion people or something mm-hmm. or 2.6 billion people or something that are people of color. Of color. That... They yeah. go and visit, and they're trying to keep this good. Because will. Jamaica be like, Jamaica bye, be babe. like, I'm done. <laughs> Barbados sorry. is like, sorry, bye. Like, not my queen. I'm like, yeah, babe. and it's like, it's like you <sighs> botched this stupid. because it's you really could have allowed her to be like you just said, like be a liaison. Be yep. you have someone who's a now bridge. a part of the royal family. She's yep. a part of the family. And she mm-hmm. looks like you. So this yep. is a win for us. You it's know? So ridiculous. But it was that okay. moment. It was that <laughs> moment. No, it's crazy. But it was that moment where, like, they all remember they talked about how they all were at this, like, senior. It was at this, this, this event. And every senior member of the royal family was there, including mm-hmm. the queen. Yeah. And the next morning on the cover of the paper was Megan. Yeah. And it was like, but and but she was like, but it's not my fault. <laughs> like it's not like I said, put me on the cover. 
I don't have control over the, mm -hmm. and he's like, I know they did it to my mom too. It's like, yep. because you're so beloved, mm -hmm. but it's an issue, but it's like, it doesn't have to be. It really doesn't. Yep. If you embraced her and were just like, she's a part of the family. So mm -hmm. she's helping. And how amazing and it, they did together. Like the two of them going on tour and doing all this. They were, they were, they were epic. Literally epic. And it's so crazy because like a part of you is like, what do I believe? What do I not believe? And not, not in terms of what, what it is, but just right. where it's coming from. Right. Like yeah. obviously William is, is a part of yeah. this BS, but when it came to like the queen and stuff like that, it's like, yo, the, I don't know. There's just like moments where you're like, she said she was free all week. Then y'all are saying she's not free. It's like, yeah. yo, this is so crazy. And then yeah. even the even the part where like uh, Harry, there was a thing that came out. Oh, Harry and <laughs> William make a joint statement saying that oh, all of that's not true. That this yo. whole discourse between them and Harry's like, I didn't, I didn't sign off on none of that. No, nope. that is insane Wild. that they can just they can just say that you you said that or say that that from a source that this is y'all's joint statement like they can just lie on you your your uh yeah. the pr or whoever i forget what the they call them the comms people yeah in, in the, the comms family. people yeah it's, it's crazy. just like it was wild it's wild yeah. um and yeah, so I for mean, that like when people are like oh you know harry and megan for the clout or like why are they doing this i'm like nah i really if you watch it you'll genuinely see to me it's like they really are getting their story out there and getting their truth out yeah. because everything is so muddied by media and lies yes and absolutely stuff that's not true so it's just yeah. like no i don't they're just trying to set the record straight from their perspective yep and i'm even totally people on their side totally Period. and even people that like hate on like oh what you know it's for money or whatever and i'm just like i was saying this to you yesterday i'm like yeah. look <laughs> everyone has a right to make a living and and do whatever yeah. it is that they do to yeah. have an income like if if that includes having a, a docu series on like on netflix I mean, come on. Okay, right. so why did why did Harry why did any why does anybody do a documentary on themselves? Like there there are artists that do it all the time. Like what's the big deal? Like it's right. not that it's it's like even if it is gonna put money in their pocket, okay? And like yep. cuz to me one of the biggest things too was like they were saying to the royal family like, "Look, we can't do this," right? So let's, we'll just go. We'll still work for the, for the institution. We'll still do royal engagements, but we just don't want any money. We don't want right. it because right. they recognized how, if I take even 1% of those tax dollars, now you feel like you have a right to basically harass me and know everything about they'll every abuse me. They abuse me and I don't, I'm done with that. And he's like, I've been, that's been my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing it any, I can't do it anymore. My mental health is, but also look what it's doing to my, my wife. Look at what it's doing to our family. So he felt like, let's just go. Then y'all will have all the press. Cause it's only in the UK. He's yep. like, y'all can have all the press. We don't want it. We don't want the money. We don't want the press. We'll just work for you guys. We'll still right. do engagements. It's right. a win. Why did they say no to that? Like right. what was, it was, it's so stupid. Cause it would make them look crappy. If that truth yeah. of that came out of like, that was so altruistic, you know? Yeah. Like, and even them pulling the security. I'm like, yo, I'm sorry. That is dirty. Yo, it's dirty. That it's they dirty. Did them, like, I was like, yo, that is underhanded. It's underhanded. Dirty. That's your own child. It's that not even like, even if you kid. wanted to disown Megan and her children, which is bad enough, right? And their children. Right. That's your son. That's your brother. Right. That's your grandson. Like, <laughs> that's man. wild. You, you're literally like, sorry, huh? Right. You lit like, that's crazy. I'm sorry. Crazy. And I'm like, y'all wonder, the royal family, y'all wonder why, like, people look at y'all like y'all crazy because mm -hmm. of stuff like that. And it's like, so yep. that's my thing. I'm like, look, they have a right to make a living and I don't care. 100%. They have a right to make a living. And if that means who cares? they're going to produce d movies and 
Go ahead. And it's good it. content. It's not like it's okay. bad content. <laughs> right. No, it's great content. So honestly, I'm kind of like, I'm glad this was made. It's because great. Yeah. He was spilled and it she was done was very tastefully. Yeah. Um, and it had everything. I mean, the show had had like a lot of facts. It had like experts talking about race and history. It oh, had so good. It had yeah. like beautiful, cute moments of like, you know, it had yeah. of them. It had like, you know, different. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, from iPhone videos and old, yeah. old videos and photos of them. But also they had friends. They had yeah. friends from the past. They had celebrity friends. They had literally. Yep. I mean, they have freaking. Uh, it was oh amazing. Gosh. Um, Tyler Perry. Who else was sitting there in the interviews? Um, Which, by the way, I love the Tyler Perry. Ty- oh, yeah. The mom. I love Serena the mom. Serena Williams. Oh, the mom. Oh, yeah. And, yes. and the mom, Dory. I love her. Yes. But I was like, I love the fact that Tyler Perry was like their savior. You never see a black person being the savior. The yes, fact exactly. that he's, he's Lilibet's um, godfather. Godfather. Even them, even them having the Zimbabwean nanny and her with the baby on the yeah, mic. Yeah, I love that. I was like, "Come on, black people!" Ah, <laughs> uh, I love it so I much. I love it. I love yeah. it. Like even Harry, he's like, "Yeah, the baby would just be like laying on her, just like sleeping." It was brilliant. It was just brilliant. yeah. He's so like, good. "It's so smart." No, I love. No, it. No, I loved it. It was really great. And I mean, okay. I I just think you know, I I I wish them the best. Like I. Yeah, I I, I think mean, that they're I think that they're definitely on an up trajectory right now. Yeah, for sure. Like even even Harry just saying how like there was that moment of him like riding his bike in like into the where they live or something, and he was just like never would be able to do this in the UK. Right. Never. Like right. there's parts that miss that because that's home for him, but mm-hmm. it's almost like this whole idea that she like brainwashed him and stole him and took him away from his family. It's like no. You know, yeah. that moment where they were like, there were so many things he that never would have been with that. Megan if he wasn't looking for like, right. he was looking for a way he out. He wanted that normalcy. He did. But also, Deb, there was parts where I'm just like, can people just use their brain cells? Yes. Like the media out, the media uh, press that would be like, oh, the queen was blindsided when Megan did this. It's like the queen is not able to be blindsided, y'all. No. She's the queen. That's not possible. Right. What are you exactly. talking about? Exactly. <laughs> What do you mean? Like, how do you even sit there and believe that that's even a thing? Right. This is the monarchy. And she's the queen. She doesn't. She knows all. She's gonna know what happens when. And why does it help them to blindside the queen? Why does that help them? Right. Why would she want to do that? That would scare the heck out of me. That's her family, and that's it's her family. family. Yeah. Like she was. Th- that was another moment. She was just like, I just want people to know I tried so yep. hard, yep. and I believed her. I like she her. was like, I wanted to be like, this was, this was the amazing. How amazing is this life? Right. With my husband doing philanthropic work. That I love. She clearly that loves I it. That I love. And I can do can whatever. Yes. Like that whole thing with the cookbook, with the, mm-hmm. the different women who, it was just so amazing. It was like, yeah. she found her calling mm-hmm. and, but it was just like, they didn't want her. It's just, nope. it was just sad, but it was, sad. It was so good. I highly really recommend. good. Highly Please recommend. go watch it, guys. It will if shed a lot of light. It. Watch it. Um, and I'm done with the hateration. Like, good. I'm done, guys. Please leave. I'm done with the hateration. Y'all can take that somewhere else. I'm so <laughs> I'm tired of <laughs> it. it. Well, please let them live their life, okay? Please. Okay. Next up. Okay. Avatar. Avatar? The way of water. The way I don't know why I'm water. doing an accent. The way of water. <laughs> Yeah, what did you think? You saw it before me. I just saw okay. it like the other day. So, what did you think of the first Avatar? Because it came out like thirteen years craziness, ago. Craziness, right? I I remember yeah. going to see it with my husband. We were like newly married. It's so crazy that the second That's one is so just now coming out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, insane, right? And they've been saying that there was going to be a two for like mm-hmm. ten years. So yeah. <laughs> Hold it's on. not like the, it just came out a couple years ago that it was going to be a two. Like we knew there was going to be a two forever and we'd just been waiting. Yeah. Um, but no, the first one, I, I remember walking in and just feeling like, I mean, obviously we knew James Cameron because he's he mm-hmm. makes epic movies, you know, yeah. from from Terminator to yeah, Titanic. obviously Titanic. You know, I was mm-hmm. obsessed with Titanic as a kid. Yeah. So walking into Avatar, definitely didn't know what to expect. Had the 3D glasses on. And didn't even really like 3D at the time, but I remember feeling like 
this is why 3D is this is this is the kind of movie 3D is made for because Mm -hmm. you literally I remember feeling like I had been in Pandora like yeah I was immersed and and the second one was the and I absolutely loved the first one and felt the same way what going into the second you know went to see it on 3D again went to the you know bigger screen one the XD and um and just completely immersive it was completely just so um captivating and and just a- absolutely beautiful mm-hmm. um you know it was a whole hour longer than the first one but it it was so epic that it just yeah. was like it, it was it was incredible what did you think yeah i so the first avatar i did not see in theaters um i saw it like i think i tried to watch it honestly multiple times Mm -hmm. but i like fell asleep the first time and i was like why like everyone loves this movie like i need to watch this movie Mm -hmm. and i finished it and i was like okay it was good i think right i think for me and this is going to be across the board i'll just go ahead and say it like there are parts of avatar in the second one that i think are brilliant that i think are like groundbreaking that i think are untouchable in terms Mm -hmm. of film Mm -hmm. Um, from first of all, I mean, I kind of like read into it, but like James Cameron had this idea of Avatar and Pandora from a dream where mm. he had a dream about like a luminescent forest and oh, wow. these humanoid people. And he held on to it. He had this in like the 80s or early 90s, but he knew that making a film about it wouldn't be possible with the technology at the time. So wow. he waited, he waited until like, 2000s and he asked for a budget from fox to start creating this motion capture Mm. technology to be able to do it so he's like he's like inventing ways to make these movies which i think is so respectful so brilliant yeah so insane it's like what that is crazy the amount of faith that you have to have to like do that and like put that together and the same thing happened for for the second movie like there was his him and his team created new motion capture technology to be able to film them actually film them underwater yeah, yeah. um which is just like obviously it's, it's unheard of they they invented it to be able to make this movie they invented technology to be able to film this which movie. is wild and it's so wild. amazing that's amazing and pandora pandora and the navi there's like all this yeah. lore i mean they hired a man who created the language for four years. He spent time creating the language. I mean, there's so much lore about it. There's a book like Mm -hmm. on, on it, on the planet and all of it. And I think that that is like, so dope. that's like that star Wars level. Yeah. Marvel level stuff where people get so immersed into like this world that someone created and you go watch the movie and you feel immersed. Yeah. So in that level, I think it's amazing. But as like a movie, okay. When it comes to the, and I felt the same way about like the second one, but definitely the first one, I was like, this dialogue is taking me out. It just <laughs> felt like a Michael Bay film, just like, oh, okay. I like I don't know, like they're coming out of the the ship and they're just like. All right, guys, we're not in Kansas anymore. It's just so <laughs> corny. I'm just like, oh my god, you know. And it's just right. like, sometimes I would just be like, this is kind of like annoying <laughs> to listen to. Yeah. Um, but the second one, I felt like stuff like that wasn't as bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that for me, and this is, I guess, getting into a little bit of like spoilers if you haven't seen the movie. Not mm-hmm. really. I won't say too much detail, but. Yeah. I just felt like, okay, the villain, he's just so mustache twirling, evil, Mm -hmm. cartoony. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, those villains don't really work for me. He was very tiring after a Mm -hmm. while. And Mm -hmm. he was just actually pissing me off because I thought he was a really stupid character. Yeah. Um, Because... It, like some characters, they make you mad, and it's a, they're supposed to make you mad. So on right. one level, it was that like he's pissing right. me off because he's supposed to. Yeah. But on another level, I was just like, you're not even the real guy. You're like a clone of the guy, right? So and you know that. And there's right. a kid here where everyone's like, that's your son. And you're like, he's not my son. That's not even my. So I'm like, right. So why are you even this mad for right. the three hour runtime of this movie to go, yeah, kill Jake Sully 
for your clones like vendetta against him that is like okay so no, he killed your yeah no, he didn't kill your family right relax i'm just like this is really this is the own this guy's only yeah and so it was just like so evil just because i don't know it was just like yeah i, I agree so that was like tiring no i agree I, and you're so right like i i do think that the second the second movie having like the same villain i was surprised by that i was like really right was it's like, the same but years, not yeah because i'm like because i had thing. re yeah i had re-watched avatar recently because i hadn't seen it literally i saw it in theaters 13 oh and that was the only time you that was it. the only time i watched it because okay. and it's 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 kind of interesting that you the first time you watched it was on just like a television screen because i do think it's like if that were if that is someone's introduction, I can understand how you're just like it, this. This is cool. Like this is fine. But it's right. almost like James Cameron movies are made to be seen in theaters. Like mm -hmm. now I could watch Avatar because I've seen it already. But right. it's like your your for no, your completely. introduction. Imagine mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like if I can if you if that, yes. It, for that introduction of of that world to be in the theater and you're you yeah. feel like you're in Pretty glasses yeah oh my god it's a whole sure. nother level so it makes sense why like but no i agree like i feel like yeah 13 years for you for for the villain to be kind of like eh. and i was annoyed because i was just like all right i'm ready i hear you it was annoying okay was hurry like, up. i'm ready for him to be dead now like yes I'm ready for him like to be but this is this is the thing <laughs> i feel like He's not, he's not really the villain. Right. The villain is basically like America. America's the villain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're America. the villain. Yeah. Like we're the villain. And so it was like a lot more that guy For in sure. the first one, but this one, it was like, it was that guy, but it's really just like the whole, the system, the Mm -hmm. every it, it's it's like and yeah. and this one for sure was way more like the first one it definitely was this staunch obviously very similar comparison to native americans right and what happened mm -hmm. to native americans in this country and how they want to displace them because they're sitting on top of some, on something that we want and so we're yeah. gonna try to move them but we don't understand how connected they are to literally i mean it was so it's not even a metaphor. It's like no, it's, it's literally, literally just the same. It's exact literally story. the same. It's just on another planet, you know, and yep. you're using, you know, you're using um, alien kind of people, you know, as 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 the metaphor. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in this one, it was a lot more just blatant in, in yeah. like in how painful that that is, like mm -hmm. how, you know, displacing and how painful, like, them killing certain animals and certain things, like, mm -hmm. this is, like, a part of my family. Like, I just think that's That part so with the beautiful. whale oh. creature was just oh. so heart-wrenching. I was oh. like, oh, my God. Them crying, the way they do, it's like, it, it's like, and it makes you feel for Native Americans. Like, I watched that mm -hmm. movie crying because I was like... Yep. This is and because if you think about it, Kayla, even though we we don't have that mentality, right? We don't look at our tree in our backyard and say, like, this tree is a part of my family. It's a part of me. It's a part of my world. It's a part of just who I who we are. Mm -hmm. But there's something beautiful about that. There's something yeah. in, incredible about how connected they are to everything. Like mm -hmm. even Kayla, even the even Awa, like mm -hmm. Awa is Yahweh. Like, it's like they, it's an alliteration oh, yeah. of Yahweh. It's like, sure. it's, it's like everything is so, it, it's just so beautiful. Like, no, it's so, as a and believer, that's the part it's like, that I it's so dope. Love, like, it's love, so dope. Love. I love that. those parts. Um, yeah. Which yeah. makes like what the humans are doing so incredibly like. I mean, you just leave. So, I mean, me and my parents and my brother walked out just like a little feeling like deflated because it's yeah. like this is literally what like Christopher Columbus and white Americans. Well, they were yeah. American. Yeah, this is what they did. And yeah. 
even even the fact that they're like, yeah, we need to kill Jake Sully because he's like the head of the snake. If we kill him, then they'll all kind of feel like yeah. we're killing the leader. And yeah. it's just like to defeat the to, to make these people feel defeated that they can't fight back. Mm-hmm. And we'll just and it's just like, yeah, and the, the movie was very I don't know if this was on purpose, but I don't remember not one black person being a part of like leading the charge against the you know navi to go on you know be uh to come down to pandora it was like kind of just white people which i thought was really interesting that is interesting um i don't remember i maybe there was i only saw like you know i don't know it was hard to remember because because they they became the avatars yes so So it could be we're not sure right but from what i could tell was just yeah and i mean the poachers just what they did was just so yeah. heart wrenching. It was really hard to watch. So heart wrenching. Um, it made me look at look at like animals in that way. It, it just made you look at it in a whole because other whales way. are like dolphins, like whales, killer yeah. whales. They're very smart like that, and they are yeah. emotional creatures. So it was yeah. very like just a reminder of like yeah, and we are yeah. and actively they literally their wanted this little bit of and that was it. That vile you killed this this you kill this creature for that Mm -hmm. like it's so like wasteful it's just like what at least you know they'll hunt and kill it and be like thank you you're gonna now Mm -hmm. nourish my family you're gonna nourish us you're gonna we're gonna Mm -hmm. use all of you we're gonna use your skin for for clothes we're gonna eat your meat and nourish us we're gonna use our your antlers for this it's like at least if you're gonna do this Mm -hmm. you're gonna feel like you're helping you're we're helping you know but you're literally killing this whale for a vial of like, and that's it. So yep. what What about the rest? Like, come on. Yep. It's just, it's, yeah, it was great. But it but. was the performances, I think, were amazing to me. I mean, so to good. me, just because you, and that's the beauty of the motion capture. It's not like they're, you, they are literally in these, actively doing these scenes, guys, in yeah. motion capture, like, you know, yeah. uh, gear. And then you know they're they're placing the anim- the animation I guess your VFX on top of them yeah. um, and creating the whole world around them. But like you feel because of that, you feel Zoe Saldana's performance come oh, through yes. physically. Absolutely. You feel Kate Winslet when she's touching the that moment where she was touching the whale. Like what is this? Oh, like I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> I felt it like in my chest. You yes, know when Zoe yes. Saldana is crying over her son, I was like, holy crap! Like I, I felt can't. it. It was yeah. just crazy that's what Um, made it so different even the first one that's what made it so mm -hmm. different from just like an alien movie or like a sci-fi type movie was the fact that you could capture that yeah and for for these actors to really be acting Mm -hmm. while there's like tennis balls connected to their head you know it's like (laughs) this weird thing but yeah did you know that was kate winslet by the way i didn't know until uh after Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of course, like you can't always like. They're, they're, sometimes their faces no will look a little right, but yeah, her face didn't look similar <laughs> at all, so I couldn't tell. <laughs> and I also didn't know that that was Sigourney Weaver playing her daughter. Yep. Until I saw it behind the scenes, I was like, oh, because I was like, she sounds so much like her. How did they mm-hmm. find that yeah, young that actress? Cool. To yeah. I know um, that was cool. I was like, is it her daughter or something? Do you that think that she's like yeah. immaculate? conception like a messianic kind of I didn't character. get that I didn't get that whole thing I, is that what they were trying to say in that why she was so connected to a because in the first movie they saved her life form yeah. by taking her body to a yeah yep. so I felt like well they didn't and then save they just, her life form they tried right they tried sorry they tried but, and it didn't work and then it didn't work but then she was pregnant just she How, became though? just pregnant. That's what that's what they're saying. Oh, that's they put her in that saying. tube, and then her body just became pregnant. So I think it's like an immaculate. So they're conception. saying, oh, they're saying, it's and like that's why she had like those pa- like not powers, but she wow, was already that, so Kayla, connected. I did not get it. You're right. Mm-hmm. That's I think why she's like a messianic type of character. She's Jesus. She's. Ewa is the is like is basically God. He's Yahweh. Mm-hmm. She, but mm-hmm. it's 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 a woman, which is fine. Like right. Right. You know, mother, sure. whatever. And then yep. you have, you have, um, yeah, you have Eerie. her being Jesus, basically. Yeah. Her that's being what I the, think. the female Messiah. 
yeah. which is great. Um, I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. No, yeah. I loved it. Did it live up to the hype for you? Did it live up to? Oh, you know, I don't feel like it's a yes or no for me. I think that I'll say in a spectrum of living up to the hype. If ten is like completely living up to the hype, I'll give them like a six. Okay. I just feel like because I was expecting the story to be a little bit more than just a retread. I felt like it was kind of just a retread of certain beats. Okay. And if they wanted it to be about this coloni- colonialism thing, I wish they would have leaned into that more. Like there was a part mm-hmm. where like, I can't remember the actress name, but she plays uh, Carmela in, in The Sopranos. Her character just stops being in the movie. And I'm just like, yeah, that's she's true. leading. Falco. She's leading. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. She just Yeah. Leaves. Did she die? I think she died. No, I think she died. And that's why I'm like, did she? I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. Like, everything happened so fast. It's just like, they should have just kind of let that be the, yeah, be more leaned into that. And I, so anyway, I'm saying all that to say the story, the plot, mm-hmm. I just expected a little bit more layers of like, yeah, not just like they're just trying to kill him just because they hate right. him and they just want to take over the planet. And I get that. But like, yeah, I just kind of expected more. And I think that I wish I had a little more time to really feel fully. I wish that I liked his kids, but I wanted to be a little bit more. I wasn't as connect. Like, I wasn't like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I love that. Like, mm-hmm. I, w- I kind of wanted that. And I didn't really get that. So uh, to me, the writing and just kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Just it's interesting wasn't, you talk about was it 13 years it's like oh my yeah. god like no, you have right. a lot of time you know what i mean yep so it's interesting you talked about even when you talked about the writing in the beginning because it's like for me it's like it's james cameron like if you watch his movies like even just like true lies or like terminator or even titanic like he's just known for like that everyday guy kind of dialogue because he writes and directs you know he always does so it's like it just feels very james cameron and i guess it's it's just a hit or miss for people like some people love yeah. it some people hate it some people are like this is horrible but some people i just, just don't like, even feel just... like people actually say that though i don't I... think people actually say they like it those lines no like you, you being like oh it's an everyday thing to me i'm like people don't actually say that kind of stuff in real life and maybe right. anymore. I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't but know. I, I see the yeah. point you're making though. Yeah. But I, I just and I mean, think it's, that it's very like James Cameron. Yeah. It just feels, it feels him. But And the things no. that you get from yeah. James Cameron are like, yes, the things that he's amazing at, this is impeccable. No one can I mean, as him, a director, you know? it's just, so. I'm sorry. It's just, because for me, okay, for me, my, did it live up to the hype? For me, it did because I, I didn't think he could do it again. And do it in a way that was like a little him having them go to this other world or this other environment was like, wow, like we already got immersed in Pandora Mm -hmm. in the beginning in the first one. He already brought us into this whole world where you're running, everything's lighting up as you're touching something or you touch a flower. Discovering this new part of Pandora. This world. Right. But then for, for it to like now you're bringing us to another environment. Mm-hmm. And it's a whole nother and, layer yeah, community of, of, and how they yes, live and, and their, how they are and how their they, strength. It's, and there's and other me, parts like, too. Wow! Like yeah. when you read the Pandora book, like there's or whatever it's called, like yeah. there's a desert. There's desert uh, tribe. There's like Yo. other parts because it's a whole world. So there's other yeah, like environments. So I think they're gonna explore that. So yeah, I which is amazing. I so I think I feel like as a movie, like. It was a little, for me, the biggest downside was just how long it was. It could have been three hours. Three hours would have been great. Three and a half was too, it was like, it was just a half hour too long. But I, I don't know. It, it It's just like as a whole. And and yes, I agree. The villain was annoying. It was annoying that he's still alive. So he's going to obviously come back in the third one. Because you could see tell they set it up for the third one. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was annoying because I was just like, I'm kind of ready for a new villain or something um but i don't know as a whole it was i was captivated i was immersed i was so no i was totally immersed there and 
it's like it because I'm so there. And honestly, Kay, like even as we go into like our favorites of the year, when mm -hmm. I was thinking through of like movies that I've watched this year, it's like I don't know. I'm yeah, I'm not like, captivated very much. Yeah, it's just like it doesn't happen as much as it used to. Where you're you walk into a movie and you're like so in it for two hours you're just so in this story you're so in mm -hmm. it with this mm -hmm. with everything that's going on and so to walk into that and to have that happen like as I was leaving I was like I felt like I was on Pandora for four hours like yeah. I can now come back out and be like go into the bathroom and wash my hands and just have <laughs> live regular life is strange now yeah like, I feel like I was on, pan on another planet that's for funny. four hours um, yeah. but yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was great. I thought it was awesome. Loved it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. At the end of the day, after I sat with it, I was like, no, I really liked it. Again, immersive experience. I think Loved. if you can do that, then like, you know, that's a, Top that's a huge part of going to the movies. So one of the last things I was going to say was I loved the whole, like the idea that you could visit heaven, basically like him mm -hmm. visiting, mm -hmm. like, I just Through thought that was cool. like the tree. Yeah, that was dope to me. I was like, yo, that's yeah, that dope. Cool. Like, no, they're little great being able thing, to, some things is cool. Yeah, like imagine being able to just go visit heaven for like oh, yeah. just go say hi and go spend time with like your grandmother or something, or your oh, you yes. know, and or, or and just spend time with them and then come back. Like that would I would be absolutely amazing. I would absolutely choose to live and live that life in Pandora. That would be amazing. If, if the sky people weren't threatening to kind of come and destroy us all like i would literally opt to live there i think that that is such a beautiful, sure. beautiful beautiful way to yeah. live all right, all right. so we're Last gonna give you guys our yes i can't <laughs> wait to, to, to hear your picks for the year we're gonna give you guys our top picks of 2022 when it comes to movies shows i think deb's gonna do some of her favorite books and i'll just yeah. have some honorable mentions we're just doing top three Okay. Um, I actually think I have one extra one for my honorable mention, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's it. Okay. We're going to try to keep it to top three, but of course we might break the rules. Yes, we'll try. Um, <laughs> do you want to start with, do you want to start with movies or? Okay. TV shows? So let's start with, let's start with movies. We might okay, as well. cool. Yeah. Okay. So what was your, first. what was one of yours? Oh, you want me to go first? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So one and this is like in no order. Oh, but say it's not in order, right? Okay. I no, not really. Um, but this was probably my favorite movie of the year, though, okay. um, which was Top Gun. Top Gun Maverick. Mm -hmm. Top nice. Gun Maverick was phenomenal, <laughs> and I oh, and wow. I was surprised because I just thought yep. it was going to be like another Tom yeah. Cruise fun action. You know, mm -hmm. you know it's going to be cool, but you're not thinking like this is probably going to be one of the best movies I see this year. Yeah, and it hands down was like right away one of those movies, Kayla, where you're like, I could watch this again. I could watch this. Yep. I could watch this anytime and yep. and love it every single time. Yep. Instant classic. Instant classic. Yeah. Um, Top Gun is on my list as well Fantastic. of top three. Yeah. Um, I just feel like I left so inspired. I cried in the middle of the movie because I was just like, I feel like I just feel like every actor committed to like what their character was yes. going through and like, you know, what they were like aspiring to do this mission. I just felt so involved and yeah it was a different type of Tom Cruise movie for me where I was just like I actually really I feel for everybody I thought it would looked so gorgeous that it was gorgeous. filmed so oh, well so well um and it was just fun it had everything it was fun it was exactly. funny sometimes it was great to look at um and there was like a little romance you know Tom Cruise yeah. and uh <laughs> Jennifer Con Connolly. I was like, okay. Yeah, I liked it a lot. So I loved it. I also have on my list everything everywhere all at once. I've never seen that. It was so good. Like how you talk, like immersive. Stuff. Like, yep. I mean, it was, you know, basically that stars um, Michelle, uh, Michelle, I don't know how to say her last name, Yo. Okay. Um, yep. And yeah, her and the guy, I can't remember his name, the guy who is in the Goonies, <laughs> the the um 
the uh, Asian oh, Josh guy Brolin? from the Goonies. No, oh, the Asian guy from the Goonies. Yes, Got and it. he's he plays her her husband, and it's basically like this multiverse movie, but it's about like family at the same time, and there's like all this action. There's like there's what? comedy. There's action. There's heart. Like you cry. Like this movie, it's gorgeous to look at. Cinematography is beautiful. It's colorful. Wow. It's inventive. It's creative. It's it's like weird, but in like in in like a oh wow, I would not have who thinks of that like an interesting <laughs> way, not in like a you're just being weird to be weird. Right, right. I just thought it had everything. I thought the acting was so good. Yeah. Like it deserves every nomination it's gotten so wow, far. Wow, that's Oscars, amazing. Golden Globes, like so good. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely one of the best movies I've seen that's in theaters awesome. this year. That's awesome. I put that on my list. I've never seen it. Put it on your list, babe. Love. Yeah, it should be streaming. Yeah. I think I – yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on somewhere. Yeah. Um, I guess – okay, so number two – or my second one would be um, Redeeming Love. Um, Oh. Did you see that? No. Oh, my God. So for me – It came out this year. That came out this year. It came out like the very beginning of this year. And, yeah, it's like – it's it's like no name people you wouldn't know anyone other than um uh your girl from Vampire Diaries was in it she had a small part in it Nina, Nina Dobrev? Dobrev yeah she was she was she was like she played a very small oh. part and and Eric Dane from Grey's Anatomy he played a part in it as well they were the only like name people that were in it but the main characters were um were like new yeah. up and coming actors. No, no, these actors. Um, okay, Eric, but she, the girl who played Angel was absolutely beautiful, and I loved the guy. The guy was like, he's British. You know, all, all these all these amazing actors are British. I know they're all British. Never know it <laughs> from like the way he he did the accent really well. Um, What's the movie about? I mean, it's obviously so. Romance. Yeah, so Redeeming Love is like my favorite book of all time. Oh, it's this right. incredible book about. It's based on the story of Hosea in the Bible. Yes. Um, where God tells this man to marry a prostitute and he married mm-hmm. and, and it, it basically is a parallel of how God, the, the, the consistency of how he loved the children of Israel, even despite their, you know, mm-hmm. abandoning him, them, them being unfaithful to him. Um, it was like this parallel, this beautiful love story of like that parallel of how God loves us when we're like, you know, a hot mess, right? Yeah. So Francine Rivers took the story and set it in the 18, 1800s gold, gold rush of California. Wow. And, you know, basically this just weaves this whole story of this incredible love story. The most beautiful romantic book you'll oh, ever read gee. in your life. It's called Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. Yeah, and it's my favorite book of all time. And everyone mm-hmm. in the, it's, it came out like, uh, year, like eons ago, like yeah, I would say, like you've always talked. Oh about my god, since I was a it, kid. it's been like, since even before I was born. I think it came out years mm-hmm. ago, but it's always been something that like all of the fans have been dying for a movie for them to make a movie, dying did. and like wow. and because it has to be done in like a, a a very tasteful way because the main okay. character is a prostitute, like. Right. It's like the the author was like there were a lot of people that came to her and were trying to make adaptations and. She was like, they just didn't get it. Like, they didn't understand mm-hmm. Michael. They didn't understand. They didn't understand it. And they finally found, like, the right production, like, team and director. They just finally got it right. And yeah. so if for for us to be, for me to be waiting all these yeah. like, years, never knowing when it was going to happen, never, like, and then finally Friends of River started coming out and saying, like, it's coming, guys. It's coming. It's coming. And oh, for it to cool. finally come out. And it it just, it was so good. Like, was it as good as the book? Like it can never touch the book, but as an adaptation of the book, it was so mm-hmm. satisfying. Nice. The chemistry was there. Like they, okay. they just okay. they got it right and it was well done. Like it wasn't one of those like low budget crap, you know, versions of the book. It was so well done. It yeah. was just it was It's it on was, Amazon Prime, so I'm going to so I'm going to watch it. You'll love it. It's so good. It's like one of my favorites. Um Amazing. Easily of the year for sure. Amazing. What was your third? Okay. And then I'll do my third. Okay. So my third, I guess, I mean, I have so many on here, but okay. Oh, I guess God. I'll say, 
I get okay. Honorable mention, real quick, before I do my third. Okay. Okay. Adam Project. The Adam Project was really, really good. Yeah. On Netflix. Yeah. That was oh, really. Wait, good. You just made me think of another one. I, I know. Yeah. No, say your honorable mentions before you say your third one. So okay. my honorable mentions are the Adam Project. So good. The Downton Abbey movie, the second movie that came out this year, it was so good. Mm -hmm. um, and then to be honest, okay, so I'll I'll just I'll leave it there. My number three was Where the Crawdads Sing, um, and that was another adaptation of just like a favorite book. I read Where the Crawdads Sing in 2020, and I was when I tell you, I read a lot of books, and it takes a lot. I mean, it's not often that I like fall in love with a book that I'm just like, yeah this book is so incredible and where the crowd at sing was just that. And then Reese Witherspoon and what she's doing with her production company is just phenomenal. And she just, she brought it to life and wasn't as good as the book, but it was a great adaptation again. And I was, I was just happy to see it. So that was my number three. That's cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I did enjoy that movie. Yeah. Um, it didn't make my, my list. I'm going to save my honorable mentions for like my section when you do books. Gotcha. So I'll save mine, but um, I did enjoy that movie a lot. It, it definitely had me invested. I was just like, oh, my God, <laughs> what is going to happen? Is it or not? You know? Right. Um, but my third on my list was the Batman um, with that almost Pattinson, made Zoe Kravitz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was yeah I just – in terms of like we're talking about immersive experiences in the theater, I mm -hmm. was just completely lost in so Gotham. True. And I just thought the cinematography was beautiful. I loved that they had this aspect of this like noir mm -hmm. vibe, but it was still it also felt like a little bit of like a splash of comic book. But then it still felt like a movie and it felt like modern at the same time. And I just thought it was beautifully done. I felt beautiful. like Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz chemistry was perfect. Yeah. Um, loved this new side of Batman that we got to see through Rob's performance. I just loved it. I thought it was loved. a great time in the theater, and I thought it was so worth the wait. So loved it. My third TV Love shows. It. TV shows. Okay. So first up, I honestly Harry and Meghan made my made my top three. Oh wow. It nice. did. I, I I don't know. I don't think I watched a lot of TV. I I watch more movies than TV, to be honest, in general. Mm -hmm. But I didn't watch a lot of TV shows this year, to be honest. Yeah. Um. But that was one of my – for sure that hit my top just because I, I love them and I'm so obsessed with them. So for them to actually give us like six episodes of just like their – everything i was like i'm just eating it up i loved it yeah it so good. yeah you know, that i mean obviously we talked about it i thought it was yeah. so just good. so so well done and yeah really great yeah um okay so first was house of the dragon for me <laughs> um i mean the end of game of thrones i was so disappointed as a fan and then i was like okay fine i'll after like two weeks i was like fine i'll try house of the dragon and i was like okay this has got this got me. I mean, <laughs> the production level was like even better than wow. Like the original show. Wow, uh, the that's saying a lot. Was so captivating. I thought the story they decided to kind of come from a different perspective of like a smaller, more more integral family story about the Targaryens. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a great way to take a step back and go from a different angle but build up to this big it's building up to this dance of the dragons kind of Got it. war of their family and i just thought it was just there was so much like i don't know you're just these characters that are really complex i just thought it was so well done i mean the lore so of course of of westeros is just i love stuff like that i'm a huge mm -hmm. sci-fi fantasy girly yeah so i was in heaven that was one of my favorite shows this year for sure so good so cool. Yeah. What's your um, my number two would be This Is Us ended this year. So it was like oh, such right. a monumental moment. Um, mm. So that was definitely one of my favorites of the year. Just to see how they were going to finish that out. You know, I'm a huge fan of when they end a show, like before it's like when it's still in its prime, when it's still really, really good. Because I feel like yep. too many shows – it's just Overstay getting they're welcome. Yes. And it's getting too like, okay, we've seen this already. 
-hmm. or it's just not good anymore. And I hate to see that when something is so good Mm -hmm. and it to just fall off the way. So I just, I was so happy they were ending it and it ended in such a beautiful way. And I was, I mean, I just love that show so much to me. It's one of, it's, it's easily one of the top five for me, best shows ever, like of all time, um, no, from beginning to end. Such a great show. I mean, incredibly well written. It's probably one of the best writing of any television show. Yeah. Easily. Uh, I mean, top five of all time. It's so incredible. Um, yeah. So for it to end this year, it was so monumental. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, it was so epic. Yeah to say goodbye to the Pearsons, you know, mm-hmm. um, but they did it so well. They, it, it was so beautifully done. Like even they, they looked forward. They just, it was, so you got to see, you got to feel like it wasn't just like ending, like we're done now. It was like, yeah, we get to see the entirety of their nice. life. We actually nice. do. We saw the beginning because we mm-hmm. saw so many glimpses of them yeah. as children. Flashbacks. So we watched the whole yeah. We watched the entirety of this these people's lives. It was so <clears throat> incredibly done. I, I just That's love so This cool. Is Us. If you've never seen This yeah. Is Us, it, it's worth the hype. Yes, like, it is worth the hype. It actually it is. is worth the hype. It it's really so is. Good. I mean, yeah, yes, I, I'm always cry, behind. But yeah, so I would good. say I'm always really behind because it's very emotionally draining <laughs> for me. Very emotional. It so is. I'm still, yeah. I think I'm even maybe in season three. I'm so behind. Mm-hmm. But like, I'll go back and be like, okay, me keep picking at This Is Us. <laughs> It's so like good, a lot, but it's really, really good. The acting and like writing, think everything. about it. You, you, I've ne- there's no other show I can think of where I literally feel like I know these people. Like I yep. know their whole life. Everyone is so like developed. <sighs> it's so developed because I saw moments when they were five, and then when they were ten, yep. and then were twelve. It's like I feel like I watched their whole life, even though it was only six seasons. Yeah. You know, it was just so it was so good. I loved it for sure. Um, okay, so. Second on the list for me was uh, this FX Hulu show called The Bear. I oh, literally yes. have never seen a show like it. Like, I cannot, I cannot compare it to a show that I know that I've seen before. It is wow. so different. It was so tasteful. It was so well done. It was so like experimental. But mm. that was the one with the kid from from Jeremy Shameless. Allen White from Shameless. Yeah, yes. Jeremy okay. Allen White is. So I mean, he is impeccable in this role. He is incredible. <laughs> Every wow. actor is amazing. I mean, you feel like yeah, it's basically it's about what the show is about is, and it's a really quick watch because all the episodes are around 30 minutes. Okay. Um, so you can literally watch the show in a day if you literally had nothing to do. But basically it's about this Michelin star, like, ex- like genius prodigy chef. Yeah. Um, who ends up taking over his brother's like sandwich shop back in like kind of the grit, the gritty city of Chicago, like borough of Chicago. Yeah. And his brother um, died by suicide. And it's like, they don't know why it was a very like, so it's about like him trying to keep the business and like his, uh, his brother's best friend who they, they just consider they're like Italian and kind of background. Mm -hmm. So like the kids consider consider him like family cousin Mm -hmm. it's just like he is involved but he's so toxic and like the whole environment is like you know their whole family is just broken and he's dealing with like obviously the emotions of his brother passing Mm -hmm. but also like he's trying to get this business off the ground and it's just like a hot mess so you but it's very like true to like real life of a chef and like real kitchens and real restaurants like I've seen a lot of like literally trained Michelin star worked in Michelin star, like restaurant chefs be like, no, that's literally how it goes. Like, wow. That's, literally- that's cool. So it's very like accurate. <laughs> yeah. But there's literally an episode where the entire episode is one is one take. It's crazy. Wow. I love in- that. They do the entire episode in like no cuts. It's yeah, one take dope. for that's 20 so minutes. It's so dope. I mean, and I think the acting, the writing, you feel like a lot of times you watch it and you'll feel uncomfortable because you feel Mm. it's like it's real because that's how, that's how good everyone is. That is so great. That's how great great the writing is. Um, I mean, it's definitely different. It's really gritty and, and like the characters are super complex and no one's perfect, but um, it's a great show. It's seven episodes, I think seven or eight. It's phenomenal. I think yeah. it's so funny White. because anyway, I could about it forever I love, love it. I love that show 
it's so funny because I literally started the first episode of that show. I was like at mom's randomly and I was like, Mm -hmm. I was just flipping through like on the smart TV Mm -hmm. and I saw an ad for it and I was like, oh, let me turn this on. And I just like fell asleep and I never went back to it. So I totally have to like, totally have to watch it. Um, And um, I love him from Shameless. I used to watch Shameless. He's so good. Yeah. Yeah, He's really good. Um, Okay. So my honorable mentions are, so one was Dope Oh, wait, did you do your third one? No, before I do my third one. Oh, your honor mentioned for TV. <laughs> okay. Before I do my third. Right. Okay. <laughs> so the my honorable mentions before I do my third is one was Dope Sick. Even though Dope Sick didn't come out this year, technically, it came out a while ago. I watched yeah, it this <laughs> year. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, but I watched it fine. this year. It's on Hulu. So you know how like you discover yeah. shows, you know, same with books. Like there were books that I read this year that That's I fair. didn't come out this year. Um but no, I discovered I watched it this year and it was just it's so good. Like it's okay. it's it's very heavy, like, but it's very good. Like it's okay. so good. Um just it's all about the how um the opioid like yeah. pandemic really epidemic really kind of raged through um re- like I think it was like the 2008, mm-hmm. 2009 or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And just how that all got started with the oxy, you know, oxycontin and and all of that. And but just to see like the inner workings of how that actually happened. And like, yo, this freaking company, like it was wild what these people did. Like, so it was really eye opening to see from that perspective and also from the perspective of like people that were you know, becoming addicted. It was, yeah, it was crazy. It was really, really good and really well done. Um, yeah. The other honorable mention was the ultimatum, even though we kind of were like, this movie, <laughs> this show was crazy. I felt like it really raised a lot of questions that were no, really it interesting. Did. Like, it's true. It was like good things to talk about, even though the show itself ended up being kind of trash. Mm-hmm. I felt like the idea and, and what it spurred in the conversation was really good. Yeah. I don't know. No, I agree. But yeah, my number three official. I feel like we're going to have the same. Abbott Elementary. Oh, no. I was expecting. Yeah. Mine is such Abbott a good Elementary. One. I love that oh, show. That's such a good one. And I just discovered it this year. Like, my husband watches it. And I was just like, I'm not really a sitcom y kind of person anymore. Like, who watches sitcoms anymore? It's not that it's that kind of sitcom, but it's it, that but, yeah. The Office style kind of show, which is yep. like great. Um, but it's just the writing is so good and it's so, a riot it's so good and you love everybody and you love yeah. and it's it's just so it's so good I can't yeah. say enough about it like it's worth no, all sure. of the hype it really it is, is. It's yeah so I good. went to I actually got to go to like their SAG Awards interview like live mm-hmm. when I was in LA um and it kind of got me back into like let me go back and watch <laughs> Abbott, Abbott Elementary like this yes. is a really it's such a smart clever so well done smart. show everyone is so like I mean, loving what they what they do, you know, yeah. in terms of working on the show and invested in like committed. So it's just it's great. So good. But um, third on my list was White Lotus season two. Oh um, right, White Lotus. Yes, That's I thought we were gonna right. have the same. But no, I I'm I mean, when a show gets me that invested, where I am like dying to watch the next episode, I'm yeah. like, oh my god, you got me. <laughs> So yeah. we talked about it in our last pod, so I won't go into it. Um, yeah. But yeah, White Lotus was my third. So Easy, you want to do your books and then I'll do my my okay. my actual honorable mentions? Okay. So books, number one was – so this book didn't come out this year, but it ends with us. I, I think it came out a couple of years ago. I read it this year. It was – so phenomenal and mm-hmm. i'm actually glad that i read it this year because the sequel came out this year so um i read both in the same which was great because i didn't have to wait it was like oh yeah that's i only have to wait a couple of months which was great um but it was it's it's worth the hype like it's such a good book it's about a a girl um it's about a relationship she's coming from a a, a family mm-hmm. where her father mm-hmm. and was abusive to her mother um and her she just like navigating life just it it starts in this new relationship but it's like the parallel of her relationship now versus her relationship when she was in high school um and i won't give anything away but it was really it's a really good i started it i've actually finally started it and i really it's so good it's so good like 
you just don't see anything coming and you're like, oh my yeah. God, it's so like ugh, heart wrenching. Very gripping. It's gripping. <laughs> and it starts with us was really like a nice, it wasn't as good of a book, but it was like a nice, like I get a good ending. Like I want to see like this beautiful picture cool. at the end. So it was nice. That was, nice. that was my, um, that was number one for me for sure. You want to do the rest? Okay, I'll do the rest. So number yeah. two was Will by Will Smith. Um, mm. His memoir was – and this – like I read it before – well, I listened to it actually. I listened to the audiobook, which I highly recommend because mm -hmm. he reads it and it's it's a whole production. He has music in there. It's wow. him. him. He reenacts different things. He'll oh, have the so audio cool. of certain things from like – shows that like you know episode of fresh prince or something that he mm -hmm. did that that's portraying something he's talking about it was just it was so wow. good and it was it was phenomenal and it happened like i read it before the whole like slap that happened the slap heard right, around the world right um so Turn of course around. when that all happened i was like oh man but i do feel like when that happened it gave me a little bit of insight of like kind of where he's at right now like I feel like he's mm. writing that memoir really unearthed a lot of things for him yeah. that he's been like pushing down for a really long time mm -hmm. and so I think he just going on tour with the book and just really talking about some of those things it's not easy and yeah he was just in a really not to excuse it but it's just he was in a really, no I, I can understand yeah. kind right. of where he was where he kind of was but um but it's a phenomenal book I mean, from beginning nice. to end, you will be completely gripped from beginning to end, especially if you listen to the audiobook. It's so right. good. Right. Um, and then my number three was okay, one honorable mention was a book called One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So mm, good. Okay. Um, I love her, by the way. Every one of her books that I've read, I've just I'm obsessed with her. Like she's my new favorite author. Nice. I read everything she's ever written. I love her. Um, but number three was this book. I don't know if it came out this year, but it was a book called The Paper Palace by Miranda mm. Cowler Heller. I love that name. Kayla, this book, it's like I can't, I, I just I can't even talk about it. It's so incredible. It was so okay. Good. Don't even don't even say it less. It was so I'm, good. It was heavy. It, it definitely was heavy. Like okay, you know, it had some elements of like abuse and things like that. But it was, yeah. um, it was just so good. The resiliency of this woman. Mm -hmm. It was just so good. So that was definitely my number, my number three for sure. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Honorable mentions for me. Um, there are books and uh, sorry, there are movies and shows. Okay, so I just kind of mush them all together. Okay, so uh, I have six of them. So sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you had honorable mentions throughout, so it made me feel okay. Less, that's true. Made that's me true. Feel, feel not as bad. Okay, <laughs> so first, Severance. It's a show on Apple TV. Okay, um, it is so mind bending mm. the concept is so crazy the concept is it stars adam scott it also has um oh gosh i forget his name it has other actors that are known but yeah um so the main character works at this job works at this big company but at the company um there is a level of uh the you know a kind of sect of the company where if you work there you have to you have to go through the severance procedure, which basically involves they split your they split your memories. So like your home person outside of work has no idea what your work person does or that that life. Like your life is split. Okay. So you're the same person, you're the same personality, whole thing, but you're you kind of like start these new this new consciousness, new memories. Mm in this in your work environment you know wow. how to speak you know how to everything yeah. it's just you have no memory of anything else other than what you do at work hmm. okay but with that is like well why what are they hiding what is the company yeah. trying to hide from the outside world and so you're seeing both ends and like people are trying to get out but they can't it's like there's so Ooh. much and it's done really well the writing's really good the acting's good it's a little slow paced but that mm -hmm. doesn't bother me because yeah. it still keeps me. And then like the twist at the end with the cliffhanger for season two, I'm like, 
birthday. Oh, I can't wait. How so, many seasons has there been? Just one? Just one. Okay. And I think there's there's less than 10 episodes. Okay. So. I'm definitely going to check that Really out. great. Great mm-hmm. show. Um, and then I have The Woman King. Um, yes. That was one I, of my honorable mentions for sure oh, that I didn't say. That I left that really theater good. so proud to be black. Yes. I left so that true. theater so freaking proud I, because yeah. – not only of the story, the story was amazing and it was like, you know, obviously um, well done, but it was just like the movie was a good movie, like it all was. around. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm proud of the story. It's like, and they're, everyone's black. No, everyone was, yeah. everyone's performance was amazing. Amazing. The way it was filmed was awesome. Like the action was killer. Like their fight so scenes good. were insane and everyone really got in shape to do most of their stunts, if not all yep. of them. Which is crazy and so respectful. Crazy. Um, so I Love thought it, it was amazing. Everyone should go see that movie if you haven't. <laughs> Next is Big Brother 24. I thought this was one of the <laughs> yeah. best seasons of Big Brother in history. I mean, yeah. the winner, she pretty much just like broke records. She like her story of like going from literally the bottom to the actual top yeah. is like the best, in my opinion, of Big Brother history. Yeah. She's in this relationship with someone in the house that everyone, like, was obsessed with. And they're actually so perfect together. It's, like, literally so a dream. Cute. Like, yeah. it's so cute. Her and Joseph, <laughs> Taylor and Joseph. So cute. So, yeah, Big Brother 24. Definitely a fun season to watch. Um, I saw this movie Barbarian in the theaters, which was a oh. horror movie that I thought was super, super good. I mm-hmm. was screaming at the screen the entire time. <laughs> Um, but I was laughing and it wasn't like overcomplicated and it was actually pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't really know kind of like what the deal is until like it gets to the end, but mm. it's not in like an annoying way. Right. Um, and the acting's really good. There's not a whole big cast. It's like maybe four or five people in the cast. So mm. again, kind of a small scale story, but it was like really well done. So good. But it's a horror movie, so I don't know if anyone. Yeah, I was a lot of people are going to be into like, it. Not but, for me, but some people um, like nothing demonic or anything like that. But just like yeah. kind of like more of a monster movie. But mm-hmm. yeah. And then uh, <laughs> I started this show this year <laughs> called The Resident. It's a medical drama. Oh God! <laughs> I watched that drama. show. I used Do to you? watch that show. I did. I watched like the first. However, I think four seasons or three or three or four seasons. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. literally didn't watch any of that. I only watched mm-hmm. season six. Excuse me? <laughs> because, but I caught myself up like, what happened. But here's the thing. This is why it's so funny. I literally am only watching this show because of this couple. <laughs> what? Because of Conrad and like his wife who passed away, her best friend. They like have this romantic plot together that's like a slow burn type of thing but I find it so layered and fascinating because of all the underlying basically his wife passed away like five years ago and like it's like this time jump and his his wife best friend and she genuinely yeah like she genuinely is like in like involved in him and his daughter's Mm. life and it's just like this whole thing they work together and they're kind of struggling with their feelings for each other i think it was and i think their chemistry is like awesome like it's so i love it so well see for me i love guilty pleasure i loved the resident me and will loved it when it first came out absolutely absolutely loved it for me the resident is one of those shows that should have ended and mm. now it's like so I stopped because I was annoyed because right. I was like it's going on for too long so now yeah. people are leaving because they're like okay well we're ready to do something else like yep. we're ready to kind and of that's why they on. what's her name the so actress she Irma. died yeah but Revenge. like multiple people like left like the black girl there was a black girl that was in it that was amazing she was mm. everybody loved her and she left and then mm-hmm. I saw like the writing on the wall when they brought in this best friend and I heard that the actress was trying to leave I was like they're gonna kill her I literally was like they're gonna kill her and try to bring him bring her on and then try to even though they yeah. hated each other I was like okay it's gonna yeah. be a hate to a yeah. love so I was <laughs> yes, so annoyed it is. I was but it's so actually good it's I was actually like, like done. 
they pull it off because to me, because I've seen, sorry, I'm going on a tangent. We need to move on. But like, and kind of end this episode. But yeah. like, they, because I was like, oh, I saw this thing on Tumblr. That's where it started. I saw this mm-hmm. whole thing on Tumblr about it. And I was like, that's really fascinating. And then I saw the actors kind of like chemistry together. And I just was like, that's kind of, let me just check it out. So I was just like, it's like looking? people saying they were they're fans of Grey's Anatomy right now. It's like okay, right. but it's like it's nothing compared to Grey's in the no, beginning. It's so like, true. I so, can totally see like what the you resident mean. Kayla in the first season, in the second season, like those for you to not like. It's I fine know. that you watch it and you love it. But I watched just the first, watch the I watched old like one. half of the first season. Yeah, okay. I thought it was really really good. But so good because it was yeah. one of those shows that it was it was different because it was behind the scenes of like hospitals can be crazy and can be yeah. shady and can be a business and mm-hmm. can be like it was like we never get that so it was yeah. a totally like thriller like, hospital right. show right yeah it was you know? yeah it is it does it was like feel. a thriller so it was really yeah i used to yeah. love that show but anyway so, so okay. yeah that was on my list because of them okay. and then lastly on my list for honorable mentions is i saw this film um on amazon i think it only came on amazon prime i don't know if it came out in theaters but it's called the electrical life of louis wayne Mm-hmm. It starred Benedict Cumberbatch and Claire Foy, um, and it's basically this movie about this like artist and his like life and his mental health, but also like he mm. maybe had like autism, um, but he was very complex. The movie is actually directed by Will Sharp, who was Ethan in The White Lotus. Oh, got you. Okay. And that was one of the reasons why I love the movie. Like, the directing is so beautiful. The cinematography is gorgeous. The actors are just, like, just doing such a great job. And the story is so, like, it's just a beautiful story of his life. And it's, it's kind of tough to watch, but I felt like they did such a great job of showing you, like, of yeah it's a it's a it's a his his life story is is hard but and um, yeah. he goes through a lot of loss and he goes through a lot um but they do it in such a creative and beautiful and colorful way and i just was like i was crying at the end and wow. it was just this random movie i decided to watch and it was just like That's oh my so god cool. it stuck with me so <laughs> That's that awesome. Was my last, my last one. I'm definitely gonna check that out for sure. Definitely. You would like it. You would definitely. Yeah, like it. totally. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining <laughs> us for uh, another one of our review episodes. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Share this with people who may have seen Avatar, may have seen Harry and Meghan. We'll definitely have those timestamps in there. Um, and yeah, follow us on Spotify, Apple podcasts, and we will see you guys. We won't be back next week, but we'll see you in a couple of weeks at the top of the year. So Merry Christmas, happy new year, (laughs) everyone. And, uh, we'll see you in 2023. Yes. We'll see you in 2023. Back and better than ever. Yes. And don't forget to send in those questions so we can answer all of your questions and give you guys advice at the top of the year. And we're so excited about the new year. We have some fun things. So Yay. hopefully you guys stick with us. And yeah, we love you. We'll see you in the new year. All right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>